from Los Angeles. It's the Bum Like It Show. Oh, God. And now, here he is. Tom Like It. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Like It Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show brought to you in part by YJ Stinger. The official energy drink of rock and roll and of Incubus in Las Vegas on August 14th. Y.J. Stinger. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Kara writes in and says, Dear Tom, a show topic you did really hit home. I had a baby at 19 years old. I made a decision that did not show consideration for the person I was creating. It made me so angry to hear all those girls go on and on about their lives and how they worked so hard. I listened almost the whole hour, and not one mentioned their baby's lives. I am now 25. I worked my way through the University of Washington, earned my bachelor's degree, and now I work as a scientist at Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. I support myself and my child because it's the least I can do. It doesn't make me anything special. My heart breaks every time I look at this little person I created and love so much because I know I can't give her the life she deserves. I provide her with every material thing a child needs. And I am a loving and patient parent. But I have failed her because every child deserves two loving and patient parents. I have failed her because I have to work long hours to support our household And I'm often too tired at the end of the day to be the happy, playful mom she needs. Please, please read this on the air. Maybe a young woman will hear this and stop thinking about her own life and start thinking about the one she could create. Yes, she may reach financial independence, but it is not fair to her kids ever. Thank you for your show, Cara. Well, Cara, thank you for writing in. We appreciate it. We absolutely do. And um, I am certain, based on phone calls we've received over the years, scattered about, that there's lots of other women out there like you. You had a baby. You thought it was a good idea at the time. And now you are sorry you did it. You realize what a mistake you made. What were the reasons you did it? You thought you were ready. You thought you were mature enough. You thought it was easier than it is. You uh, were trying to hold on to a guy that uh, didn't want to be with you. You were trying to show your parents how grown up and independent you are. In many cases, you uh, just simply didn't give it the thought that you should have. Now there you are with crying baby trying to make ends meet. Guys don't want you because you got baggage. Having a social life is impossible anyway because you got no time for it. And you regret it. And like Kara, nobody ever says, I hate my kid or I wish she'd go away or anything like that. It's just that when you look into the kid's eyes, you feel guilty. Because you did something you shouldn't have done. Can't undo it now. And yes, you love your kid, but you know you did the wrong thing. The wrong thing. Is that you? Call me. Some like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Some like it. 1-800-5800-866. I went and did this uh, Dick Clark TV show, The Other Half, and uh, they showed a video on the show of these, like, all these firemen in uniform. The woman stood up and said, oh, I'd do anything for the firemen, Dick. 
And I realized she was talking to Dick Clark. It's a Tom Likey show. Like his show at 1-800-5800. Tom, thank you for tuning in. All right, you had a kid. You had it young. It was a big, big mistake on your part. Do you have the guts to admit it? Do you? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Sherry on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? All right, Sherry. Good. Well, I just wanted to say that I totally agree with the woman that called in a little while ago. I had my first baby when I was 16 years old. And I regret that I couldn't give her the life that she deserved. And um, and well, why, did, why did you do it? Well, I kept the baby because I thought at the time that it was the right thing to do. So was it an accident or were you hoping to get pregnant? No, it was an accident. Definitely an accident. So you were not, you were using birth control yeah. And it didn't work? Nope, it didn't work. So you decided to have the baby, and you thought it would be wrong to have an abortion? I thought it was wrong to have an abortion, and I felt that, um, you know, I had to be responsible for what my actions were at the time. And um, and I love my daughter dearly, and I worked my butt off to give her the basic needs, but as far as giving her um, extras and even putting her through college, you know, it was difficult. It's very difficult. How old and is she I, now? She's 24. 24? Yep. Wow, so you were 16. Yep. Wow. Unbelievable. So, and I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. I mean, it's, it's tough. And you look at that little child, and, and they want to play the saxophone in school, and you can't afford to rent the saxophone for them, or they want to play sports, and you can't buy the sports equipment. It's, it's not fair to them at all. And, yeah. you know, I, I, if I could say anything, I just hope that some girl out there hears me and it realizes that it's not all fun and games. Wow. All right, Sherry, hopefully somebody will hear your story and not make your mistake. Well, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Sherry. Bye. Vic bye. Victoria on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. You know, I hear you 100%, and I often think about this constantly in my situation. Originally, I wasn't going to have my daughter, although the father was so excited. He passed away, and that's the reason why I had her. And his family was so supportive, and my family was supportive and continues to be, so I thought, oh, this is going to be a piece of cake. I can still live the life I was leading. I was used to getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning, doing whatever I wanted to do, and it's so incredibly hard, especially because I had to get rid of his side of the family. And these people have so much money. And let me tell you, Tom, I was offered a nice place in Laguna Beach. I turned everything down that I was offered because it was under their conditions. And my friends were like, you're so crazy. You know, you can pretty much live the life you want to live, but I wasn't going to live that way and have her go to the school they wanted her to go to and grow up all screwed up like, you know, her own kids. And then I realized I'm screwed. And I, I'm struggling. It's, it's just so hard. And it's, it's often very, very depressing, and it's hard to remain strong when you look in your child's eyes and you have to say, no, I can't get this. Um, every little bit of money I have, I have to absolutely save. There's not a lot of extras for her, and I feel so bad, and it hurts me to my heart every single day. And she's at that age now where she's saying, where's my daddy? Well, there is no daddy. And, of course, I, you know, I can't tell her that. And she's going to want to know later what happened to her father. She's going to want to know what happened to her father's side of the family. And I'm going to have such a hard time telling her. And what are you going to tell her? I don't know. And I'm really trying to decide that right now. But what do you think? I mean, would, 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 do you think it was the wrong thing to get rid of that side of the family? I mean, I really did think I'm going to be totally financially secure. And with the conditions... 
I, I wasn't going to abide by the, what they wanted me to do. There's no way I was going to put her through that situation. You know, going to the Christian school they wanted her to go to, growing up all prissy, I, I, that's just not the way that I wanted her to be. Mm -hmm. do, do you understand what I'm saying? I do. You know, so... But that's um, what uh, having a family is all about. Everybody's got their own opinion. Yeah. Many people get involved in things that are uh, only peripherally their business. Yeah. They start trying to tell you what to do, especially if they're helping you. Yeah, and, and... Anybody who helps you is going to think that their opinion is more important than those who don't. So do you think I was... I'm selfish for not letting her... I mean, she could grow up. It was a great lifestyle. She really, really could if I talked to them. Mm -hmm. But I refused to talk to them. Right. Well, you, you there's no free lunch. Yeah. I mean, I, I really think... My opinion is the way to go with something like that is to tell them, uh, thanks but no thanks for the help, because I know there's strings attached, but I want my kid to know the whole family. Yeah, well, you know what the situation was, is if, there, if, if I did not do things the way they wanted things done, they didn't want to be bothered. All right. So well, that's why I walked away from the situation, and it hurts me. Well, you should, always let, you should always let them know uh, that they're welcome back in, as long as they understand that you're the boss. Yeah, well, I, I just want to say it, it is it is really not easy, especially when you have when you have dreams, and I had so many dreams, and I really was so naive, and I thought everything was going to work out, and it just, it hasn't. It's, it's bad. It's really bad, and, and I love her, but I might have chosen a different path, and I was just caught up in the moment, you know, and I wanted... Some, you wanted a memory of her father, mm -hmm. and I, I knew he wanted her, but I didn't realize how difficult it was going to be because it is, it's really hard. Yeah, well, Especially no one ever thinks about that. People love having babies, having baby showers, telling everybody they're pregnant. They love that, uh, but they don't realize how much work is involved. That's why I don't have kids because uh, I was the first of four. And many times I was uh, dispatched to do uh, the chores around the house to uh, help out. I knew how hard it was. And I decided as an adult, I had, I've, already, I've already been through this. Yeah. I've already done this. Hang on a second. Craig, what did you want to say to Victoria? Hey, Victoria, you know, swallow your pride a little bit. You're talking about how bad it is and how difficult it is raising your child. Why don't you give her some of the nice things that, maybe these in-laws could provide for you. It sounds um, like you're being a real, you know, I can't use the word over the phone, towards these people. They're obviously offering a lot to you for the sake of the kid. Okay, well, let me explain to you what that would mean. That would mean having her go to a Christian school, not of my choosing, having her go to a specific Christian church, not of my choosing, Okay, me living, I, I wouldn't mind living in Orange County, but there'd be so many rules and regulations. Like, I'm a child, too. I want to give her all those things. But at the same time, I mean, I, I'm going to be miserable, which is she's going to end up being miserable seeing her mother miserable so as choosing, well. You're choosing, Victoria, you're choosing to be, be miserable. Do you go to church now? No, I don't. You don't. Have you? Oh, yes, I have. I was raised You turned out okay, right? Okay, and you turned out okay. Okay, I turned out okay. Give her the other nice things in life. So what if they want her to go to church? Go with her, and then you can talk to her afterwards and tell her how wrong they are or put it in perspective for her. You turned out okay. What I you're turned doing out okay. is you're cutting off your nose to spite your face. You're offering her a lifestyle and you a lifestyle that you can provide really nice things for her that go way beyond what she does on Sunday. See, and that's, that's the truth. That's the dilemma that I am in because all of my friends pretty much say, give it, get the house, get all this. I would almost feel like I'm prostituting myself and my daughter. I really would, and that's the problem that I'm going through. Victoria, I, I, tell us, tell us um, how your daughter's dad died. Well, he, had, well, he died from a car accident. That's pretty much what I'm going to say. That's what you're going to say? Yeah. Meaning it was something else? Yes, I, I really can't answer that right now. You can't? I mean, I can, but I just, I can't. All right. I was just curious. It wasn't an accident, or it was an accident? That, that's part of it. it that's part of it. it that has, 
a lot to do with it. I'm sorry. 